Alright, welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be covering Star Citizen. This is one of those games that I've tried. I don't know why to be quite honest and I feel like that's how a lot of people end up playing this game. They just give it a try and end up falling in love with it or they just don't like it. And today we're going to be breaking down why maybe you should try out Star Citizen. I'm going to be talking about general things for a lot of people that don't really know about this game. The state it's in, what's going on, is it even released or is it still under development, etc. So yeah, we're going to be talking about all those things. But once again, if you guys are interested, I'm giving away a free game copy, any game of your choice, whether that being all the new games I've come out or even Star Citizen. If you guys are interested, just make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. You leave a comment on this video and you follow my Twitch. Everything is in the description. And let's start with the video. All right, well, first of all, let's kind of start with a general idea of what Star Citizen is if you guys are not familiar with the game. And to be quite honest, this is probably the case you're in because this is a game, like I said, that's known by a very particular niche of gamers out there. And there's a lot of people that would honestly enjoy this game that don't know about it. So in general, Star Citizen is actually still in development. It's multiplayer, so you can play with other people, right? It's a basically massive online game, space trading, combat simulation. That's kind of the general gist of the game, right? So the game is being developed and published by Cloud Imperium Games for Microsoft Windows, an extended retry of unrealized plans for freelancers. Star Citizen is being led by director Chris Roberts. Once again, skipping all those nerdy stuff, right? The game was announced via private crowdfunding page in September 2012. So it kind of started by the community effort in general and was later joined on October 18th, 2012 by successful Kickstarter campaign, which actually drew in 2 million US dollars. Pre-production of the game began in 2010 and fast forward production starting in 2011, right? So this game has been around for a while and it still, once again, over a decade later, is in development. It's in early access, it hasn't been officially released, which has a lot of its problems I'm probably gonna be talking about towards the end of the video, right? So getting through all the nerdy stuff of what this game is basically in general and what's going on, you know, from the development side, that's what it is. Now let's move on to the actual gameplay, what you're gonna be experiencing when you play Star Citizen. And as you probably guessed it by the footage you've seen so far, and you know, once again, it's called Star Citizen. Yes, this is once again a space game, but hear me out, it's a lot more than that. Right, so Star Citizen combines features from Space Simulator, so there's a lot of detail there, also, first-person shooter and an MMO, which means massively multiplayer online genres, across its four playable modes. These modes, called modules, provide different player experiences from one another. Three of the modules, Hangar Arena Commander, Star Marine, provide examples of gameplay features that appears in the Persistent Universe module, but also have their own mechanics. Now, let me talk about the spaceships in this game. Now, I'm not someone who's big on, for example, big spaceships or space games in general. And let me tell you something, this game absolutely blew my mind away. I mean, the level of detail, the attention to detail is extremely important to the devs behind this game, which I can see why they've spent so much money and the game is still under development. For instance, right, let's take a look at all the little bolts, the nooks and crannies of all the doors and the elevators, and honestly just, you know, walking into the lobbies and seeing all the detail there. If you're someone who's into spaceships or if you're someone who's even in aviation in general, and this also brings me to my next point, which I want to talk about, is a lot of the community in this game are aviation fanatics. They just love aviation. Some of them actually work in aviation or it's just, you know, their hobby. And if that's your thing, then you definitely do want to give this game a try. Because believe me when I say, you're going to be blown away by the level of detail. I mean, every single ship is so unique and different. And they've done it so beautifully well. And I can tell they've spent probably hours, thousands of hours on every single ship. And there's so many to choose from, right? So... That's just honestly talking about the level of detail. The first person shooter is also great. I mean, you can honestly just leave your ship and once again, you have to have the proper gear. So there's a lot of detail there. And I'm not someone who's just, you know, extremely well knowledgeable in this game because I've only started to play this game very recently. And I've, honestly, it's just been a week of trying this game out. But in general, the first person shooter is, is amazing. I mean, the zooming in, the scoping, the combat in general, the reloading, it's just, it's all so fluid and done well. And when you're playing a game that's not a first person shooter and it's so fluid because I come from other games, right? I played Halo, I played COD, Call of Duty, I played Battlefield, I played, you know, even Rainbow Six Siege or CSGO. I played all those other games that are first person shooters and to see it done so fluidly well in a game that's not even an FPS, right? It's an MMO in general. 
is just so impressive because honestly i can see this game going to levels beyond where they can even be full-on blown out pvp matches that you can do and you know this game has so much potential which you're gonna hear me say a lot throughout this video but next i want to move on to what honestly is this game's best attribute and it has to do with the flying mechanics in this game once again this is probably going to be the most confusing thing for you when you start because this game has this very unique thing i like to say it right that it doesn't kind of spoon food you right like you kind of have to do everything and figure everything for yourself now to some that is a good thing because once again that's you know a very immersive and you have to figure everything out and it's a fun experience for other it's a lot of you know frustrations and time wasted that was my case for a bit until i figured it out because you kind of just spawn in this world and whatever you know atmosphere you choose whatever character you choose there's a lot into it i would have to do a whole dedicated guide on introduction to this game but in general long story short you literally just spawn in this world and you just kind of figure it out and you walk around and you're not really told much besides you know quick inventory guide and that's pretty much it you know so you just have to figure everything out for yourself and honestly that's what makes this game so beautiful but what i wanted to talk about next is the multiplayer aspect of this game now although once again you're not going to be running into people everywhere just because once again the gaming community in this game is not that active right you don't have millions of people playing so wherever you're flying space you're going to find a ship etc but when you do boy oh boy is it just amazing it's honestly so exciting because once again you're gonna have ships you know shooting at each other from the sky you're gonna have people in actual land rovers that you see on the moon when you're watching movies etc going at it and you're gonna have fps full blown out fights in front of certain sites at you know different world or planets that's you know you can think about it as a world or you can think about it as a planet right it's just it's so exciting now what is this game's worst attribute what does this game lack in i'm gonna be quite honest its worst attribute is probably its best attribute now this might sound confusing what do i mean by that right what i mean is that this game is just so big that if you're a new player it is so overwhelming it might actually turn you away now i'm kind of speaking to the devs here if any of them are watching this video i'm not sure if they will but if it does you know go out there does do pretty well in the algorithm which i hope it does then this will actually maybe hopefully reach the devs of this game right so maybe tone down the beginner you know difficulty level of understanding what's going on maybe even spoon food some of the players that are new to the game a little bit showing them you know how to actually get to the hangar how to actually fly around how to you know get a weapon much easier than what's currently in the game because i'm going to be completely honest someone who goes into this game that is on the edge around the fence of you know playing this game they're going to be probably turned away by how hard it is to actually get into this game because it's so confusing. And once again, in today's day and time, people don't really have that much patience, especially for games as they used to back in the day. So if it's very confusing when they start and they don't know what's going on, they don't know how to get to the hangar, fly a ship or even get a gun. I mean, they might quite honestly just log out and play another game right so that user interface that ui is so important for new players because i think what this game really lacks is attraction from the general community that are not space fans right that are not aviation fanatics that just kind of want to play a game that has good mechanics and this game definitely does have that but how do you deliver that to the general gaming community well you're definitely going to want to go ahead and make sure that your beginner playing experience is good you want to make sure it's fluid it's easy to understand and then throughout the game the difficulty can kick up and then it becomes confusing to find a perfect gun or the perfect ship or you know kind of build up your ship or fix it or fly around sure that makes sense but if the you know if the player is faced with difficult you know mechanics from day one that's going to be a turnoff for a lot of people and because that's honestly what i struggled with so i wanted to share that let me know what you guys think before we move on to other points as well in the comment section down below now let's kind of indulge ourselves in basically what these different modules are and for arena commander star marine persistent universe etc if you guys are familiar with the game you guys probably know these very well but to those that don't know well let's start with hangar module in the hangar module players can explore or modify their purchased ships and i believe when you start the game you are given a ship or you're kind of having to buy one in a way but you're provided with one right so these purchase ships that have been publicly released and interact with the ship's system now to a lot of people this is going to be a lot of fun because this is something you don't really see in other games like i mentioned before though no flying options are available also included are decorations and flair that can be placed and arranged within the hangar 
as of Star Citizen Alpha Patch 3.13, which released in May 2021. The Hangar module is currently disabled due to ongoing issues with no time frame for when it will return. Let me know if this is different. This is kind of what I've seen so far from what I've looked at. Now, the next one we have is the Arena Commander. To be quite honest, for a lot of people that try this game for the first time, this is probably going to be your favorite one. I'm going to be honest. I know I say this for all of them. It's going to be your favorite one. I promise, right? So, Arena Commander is an in-fiction space combat simulator, right? Like, basically, that's what it is. Allowing players to fly ships in various game types against other players or even AI, artificial intelligence opponents, in the free flight game type. Players can pilot their ship without threat of combat encounters, while in Vandal Swarm, up to four players fight waves of computer-controlled enemies, AI once again. Capture the Core is a game type inspired by classic Capture the Flag rules, where a team must capture the opposing team's core and deposit it on their side, a racing game type set on a specifically designed map with three courses. Allows players to fly through checkpoints and attempt to beat each other's time. So, there's a lot of fun there if you want to play with your friends, right? Game types like Battle Royale and Team place players in direction of position of one another, gaining points or destroying enemy ships. A final game type is called Pirate Swarm. It's basically a horde, you know, kind of type game, which is similar to Bandol Swarm, but with different enemy types. G-Force effects on the pilots were introduced in Arena Commander, which is a lot of fun because it basically makes it an actual true space experience. And in general, which could cause a player to black out if they moved in a way that applied substantial G-Forces on the ships, right? Equipment to customize the ships using Arena Commander can be rented to further allow for modification of the player's ship combat ability. So there's so much potential for customization there. And like I said, the choices you make affect the player themselves as if it was an actual full-on space mission. While a multi-clue component of Arena Commander was announced at 2015 Star Citizen Conference, it has yet to be implemented in the game. That was Arena Commander. Once again, a lot of fun. Let me know you guys think of this. I think this is probably the most immersive experience you can have in Star Citizen. Next up, let's talk about Star Marine. This is one you probably don't know much about because it's something that is a smaller portion of the game. Not very small, but a little bit smaller, I believe, than the rest of them. Let me know if you guys agree once again. So Star Marine is an in-fiction ground combat simulator allowing players to fight each other with conventional weaponry. So kind of brings that FPS, you know, into it. First person shooter. Two maps were made available on release along with two game types, Elimination and Last Standing or Last One Standing, Last Team Standing, etc. Right? Last Stand is a capture and hold game type with two opposing teams, the Marines and the Outlaws, each attempt to capture one or more control points to gain points. As a team captures more control points, they gain points at a steadily increasing rate. Elimination is a free-for-all game type unlike the team-based Last Stand. Players work individually to gain the highest kill count before the match ends. So basically kind of like a death match if you guys are familiar with COD, Battlefield, etc. Both game variants last for 10 minutes or in the case of Last Stand until one team occurs a higher score. So. Star Marine, very simple, you know, FPS type game modes that are just there so you can have fun. And last but not least, from these modules, right, these kind of game specific type combats and modes that you can have, we have Persistent Universe. This is one that has a lot of information. I'm going to try to break it down and make it as simple as possible for you guys, just so this video is as concise as possible. The Persistent Universe, basically initially referred to as Crusader, combines the gameplay aspect of Hangar, Arena Commander, and Star Marine modules into a single multiplayer platform. So it kind of brings it all into one, thus the name Universe, right? I'm pretty sure that's why they put that name. Let me know if you guys agree. <laughs> Players can freely navigate around and on the surface of four planets, nine moons, a planetoid, and a gas giant. So honestly, this is probably the most space experience you're going to get within Star Citizen if that's what you're looking for. Players can create a male or female avatars for the Persistent Universe. Upon entering the mode, players spawn at a space station or one of the available planets in the game. Once spawned, players are given the freedom to choose what they pursue, whether it's trading, bounty hunting, mining, or taking on missions in general as quests. A law system keeps track of player activities and penalizes players for engaging in criminal behavior. So, kind of like a role-playing experience, that's monitored by the system itself, so, right? So it's it's very immersive in that sense. With a rating that blocks access to certain areas and can lead bounties or violent reactions from law enforcement. In order to reduce their criminal rating, players must hack the law enforcement network or pay off fines that they have incurred, which is once again, just so much fun because to be honest, 
This is as realistic as gaming gets, right? When you have a background system that keeps track of player activities and the decisions you make in the world, which actually affect, you know, decisions that happen later on, it is cannot, it cannot get more immersive than that. That's that's the best way to put it, right? So, let me know what you guys think of these modules. I hopefully I did them justice. Once again, if you guys are long-time players of this game, if I made any mistake or I said anything because I'm just very new to this game and I wanted to give my opinion on this game, for those that are also looking to play this game in 2023, Make sure you guys correct me in the comment down section below, and I'll be sure to heart your comment just so people can read it. But yeah, there you go guys, Star Citizen in 2023. A game that's been in development for over a decade, God knows how long it's going to stay in development. Honestly, it deserves a lot more recognition, I'm going to be completely honest. It is such a fun game, there's so much to do, and honestly, you can have so much fun if you play with your friends. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video, and honestly, this is all I have. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I'm thinking of doing variety content. So I'm covering all types of game, right? God of War, Ragnarok, Zelda, so for all the Nintendo lovers, Hogwarts Legacy for all the Harry Potter lovers, right? So I'm trying to cover as many games as possible because to be quite honest, I love playing all types of games. If you guys do as well, then make sure you guys do subscribe because that's the direction I'm going for with this channel. And I'll see you guys next time.